Welcome back. It's time for Primetime Crisis. Once again, I'm Captain Logan. I'm Eric. And today, Eric and I are going to talk real briefly about a few TV shows that we sampled or uh, watched a little bit of over the last three weeks now. And the first thing we'll talk about, uh, again, not for very long because we didn't get very far into this, but we kind of just want to... Um, you, I, I kind of put a pin in this. We might watch some more of this and talk more about it down the road. Although we haven't done that much, you know what I mean? We're like, we'll we'll uh, we'll sample something and then we end up coming back to it. I would like but to I'd come like back to, to it, but I don't know if we have time to sit down and watch it together. Maybe not together. But, yeah, I yeah. Don't know. But if one of us happens to binge a bunch of it, there's mm. no good reason not to bring it up. So anyway, uh, but we Eric bought the first season of Men in Black, the animated series, which is notable because it's the only season you can buy. No, you can also buy the last season, which I think is season four. Oh, really? Yeah, it was a Target exclusive. So you can get the first season and the last season. Okay, but can you get it for a reasonable price? I assume that being an exclusive, you couldn't even get it now. I'm not sure. Okay, so my point might stand. Uh, this is the only easily accessible one that you can get on Amazon. Um, this is a series that I remember seeing a couple episodes of here and there, kind of spotty. I mm -hmm. never hear anybody talk about this show. And I looked for reviews, and there's like none. Really There are reviews of the Godzilla one, there's reviews of Extreme Ghostbusters, there's like none for this. Yeah, uh, this is made by the house that makes the other two shows that Eric just mentioned. Um, that has this really uh, and uh, other stuff too that aren't coming to me right Big off. Big guy and Rusty. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is based on a Frank Miller comic. They have a really distinct. Uh, I would describe as somewhat ugly style. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of intentionally so, mm -hmm. and works for a lot of the things that they make. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought this was a really kind of off-putting look when it first came out, uh, but it, it grows on you. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we watched the first two episodes of this, and uh, I remembered more about this than I realized I did, uh, particularly the intro and the theme song. That really stuck with the me. The intro I had not seen since I was a kid. Uh, and, 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 and while we were watching, I was like, I was like, wait, wait, it's going to do the thing, because the big thing in the movie, the big edge in the movie for me is the Neuralizer, but in this I remember being really captivated by the little thing you put up to your eye and you see aliens. Oh, you yeah. You see an alien. And it's not in the show, but it's in the intro. I mean, I, it is probably it is. never in the show? It probably is. It's not in the two episodes we watched. Right. right. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so, did this hold up for you? Yes. Yeah? Uh, and better than, um, I, at least for, from what we watched and, like, looking at, uh, like, like we looked at Wikipedia and stuff, I think this in, as a whole, will probably hold better, hold up better for me than both, well, than at least Extreme Ghostbusters, in that it's episodic, but things come, things come back. Yeah. Uh, like, like, it keeps the, track of a continuity, but it's not a real tight, super tight uh, continuity. The bad guy in the second episode, which is Buzzard, because it's the Buzzard Syndrome. Syndrome. Mm. Um, and everything's something syndrome in that show. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if they keep that scheme or if they drop it by the second season. Yeah. If it's like I don't a tick know. thing where they stop doing that. Um, well, given the way some of these are titled, I don't think it. Like, it's. They're just titles with syndrome at the end. Like, yeah, I buried the alien syndrome. I take. The, the take no prisoners syndrome. Like. Um, I think the joke is just that we use that word in a lot of science fiction episodes. In the first one, two, three. On, on, the, on the first disc, there are two Raymond Chandler titles. There's the goodbye, uh, the oh. long goodbye syndrome, and the farewell, my lovely syndrome. Weird. That's in. Oh wait, and the big sleep syndrome is on is on disc two. They just keep doing it. Someone liked Raymond Chandler. That's really funny. Um, it's not influenced on the episode. At least, at least the long goodbye isn't anything like the long goodbye. Also, weird minor point, but isn't it nice to have the episode titles listed on the back of the DVD box? It is nice. That never happens. Yeah. Um. So but, anyway, let's talk about this. But, just but, but, but yeah, I th I think this holds up for me. Better than Extreme Ghostbusters, just because it's not entirely episodic. Mm -hmm. uh, the Extreme Ghostbusters, I feel like, was kind of dying for some some returns and some uh, some continuity to it. Uh, and it seems like what we were looking at, there are at least re re recurring villains and things like that. I like the flavor of this show a lot. It is a thing that if I had a uh, if I if I'd seen this and I had an anchoring for something that felt like this, it's the only place I could get it. I mm -hmm. think it's the best way I can describe it. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing else really exactly like it. Uh, it captures the flavor of the first movie pretty well, but it, I imagine, merges it with the flavor of the comics, but I don't know because I can't read them. Because they're like $1,000. Because you can't get them. Yeah. Marvel owns it! Why don't they just put out a trade? Uh, but it's really dry. It is really dry. And... The there are two kind of big knocks, at least based on the first two episodes. Yeah, the comedy does not play great. Some of it's funny. There's a lot of humor that doesn't work and feels kid showy. Yeah, not sure. Not like I don't know. 
But it's almost like throwaway. Show, like but... we're not even supposed to be laughing at it. Like it's just this is a obligatory thing. It's a kid show. This is how this is how we got this show on the CW or whoever it was. Yeah, on the WB, this really WB. disturbing kid it's, show. It is disturbing. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the things I really like about it, and uh, it's really imaginative, right? Like they they take uh, what was done with the aliens in that first movie, and they go as alien as they can go with it. Yeah, and it it feels like a more natural. Well, okay, so the continuity doesn't match the movie at all. No, um, it, it can't. Uh, that's the thing we do with kid shows all the time. That based on on movies, where if there's a big status quo changer at the end, uh, but the thing that made the movie so much money was the status quo of it. Particularly if it's a character that you lose at the end of the movie. Uh, we, we just... Well, like, for instance, The Mask. Well, of course, he still has The Mask, even though he doesn't have The Mask at the end of the movie. Mm. That kind of thing. Uh, K's, K's still an agent, but also L is an agent and just seems to be an agent. Yeah. It doesn't seem like Jay brought her in, and Jay is way less experienced, which doesn't work great. Mm -mm. Jay's kind of an idiot. He's really incompetent, and he doesn't have that same flavor of humor that he does in the movie. Which I understand is difficult to recapture, but... They're not even trying. Yeah, it doesn't... He's, that's, he's really most married. of the humor that doesn't land is, is Jay humor. But I would say Kay is really interesting and mysterious, and... Yeah, I like Kay a lot. I like him a lot. Um, no, I'm I'm really glad that that, that, uh, that I got this. And, and that the we thing it really more. gets about that movie, uh, that it brings back over and over again in interesting ways, is the idea that nothing is ever what it seems. Mm-hmm. And that seems to be the mission statement of that show. And, uh, and it keeps the dirtiness and the griminess that, yes. the, that, the, that the sequels lose. And I think, it, it, for, especially for a, for a kid's cartoon show, it keeps me guessing a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that thing in the second episode we, where we watched, uh, where you, or, or was it the first? I forget. You, you have the, you have the, um, the spaceship uh, that, um, that, that, that Kay ends up blowing up and you, and, and you don't know how he's going to do that and uh, I don't know there's just he's always he's always a step ahead even of me I didn't know what he was doing my, my, that's, my, that's pretty good my favorite thing where, where both of us were like oh was so in the first episode we bring back the aliens from the movie where the head opens there's a little alien inside we oh bring them yes back. this is great and then the second episode we get another one of those and we're like I guess they're just going to be part of the main cast but then the little body's head opens up there's an even smaller alien side and he's evil yeah it's like a Russian doll <laughs> Oh, and we're both like, oh, that's cool. He's full of tinier men. Um, so if you didn't watch this when you were a kid, but you liked that first movie, you should check this out. It's it's quite good, and at least the first two episodes hold up pretty well. And it's surprisingly well. moody. Uh, and fine to, I, I I guess, watch with your kids, but I think... I still uh, want you to watch this with, with Freddy and some of these Yeah, guys. see what Freddy thinks, because I think Freddy would love this, mm -hmm. uh, my, my, th my three-year-old, but because um, he likes he likes, he likes likes weird, uh, you know, monstrous things, mm -hmm. um, you know, things that are kind of supposed to be scary. But... Um, I also think that uh, adults that go back to this might appreciate it. Yeah, um, in a way that I think maybe so they too. Didn't when they were, kids. I think people will be surprised. Especially the moodiness. And I think it's unfortunate that it's kind of a forgotten. It's gem. a thing that's fun to watch late at night. Yeah, it's very yeah. late at night kind of yeah. show. I think. Um, okay, Eric. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about Helsing? All right. So, um, uh, I recently got Helsing, which um, actually uh, I got kind of for my birthday as well. Um, uh, my girlfriend bought this for me because we were running a sale, and so she was just like, "Is there anything you want?" And I was like, "Well, I have these things," and so 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 I, I got Helsing that way. Cool. Um, I haven't watched Helsing in probably over a decade. Um, I don't think it's been for me, and I never finished it. I don't think. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I don't think I watched Helsing at least since I made a YouTube channel, but I might be wrong. Did you review it back then? I'm sure I did. I at least reviewed the manga. Um, but it's a thing that I had on DVD when I was younger. I don't know what happened to those DVDs, but I had it on DVD because I watched it a lot. Yeah. Um, so like so much of this, it's one of those things where like, where like, it didn't feel like I hadn't seen it in so long. Um, because I, I watched it a lot. It was, it was a thing I just played a lot when I, when I, when I, when I was, when I was younger. Um, it's kind of one of the last great, uh, animes aesthetically for me. Um, so Helsing has been remade. Uh, in subsequent years, uh, much closer to the manga. Yeah, you you mentioned that. Uh, I, I've only wa I've only ever watched the first episode. Someday I will watch all of it, but I've I've not gotten around to it. I read the manga, like you know what I mean. Like I don't. I've gotten that story already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't look as cool as this, and part of that is they use so much CGI. Um, like when Alucard does like all his shadow stuff, and like the, the like a wolf comes out of his shoulder and stuff. It's all CGI, which makes it feel. Not as cool to me. It doesn't yeah. look as good. Um, so, but it has been a long time since I watched this. And I was kind of interested to uh, 
to go back to this. And uh, it holds up really well. Um, it is very different from the manga, which to, in their defense, Helsing is ten volumes long. When they make this, there are three. Uh, they're having to stretch, and, well, not even stretch, they're, they're having to, I mean, some stuff is, is stretched, but, like, they're having to work with not a lot. Um, they don't know where he's going. Uh, th it's a very different flavor than the manga and what will later be Helsing Ultimate in that the the, the manga is, is very Japanese-y in its humor, um, like, I do not think you would have liked the manga as much as you liked this when you were younger, because it is very Japanese-y in, 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 in its humor. Um, it's very broad comedy. Uh, I think a big thing is, I think the big difference between the anime series and, and the manga tonally is, comes a lot from just inspiration points. I think the manga is very influenced by Bram Stoker's Dracula, the film. Yeah, okay. It's very, it's very big oh, and weird. The thing that I didn't know what we were looking yeah, at. We yeah, 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 yeah. We've done that. Yeah, it's very influenced by that. I mean, it's also influenced by his, by, uh, by, by, by the author's love of like military history and guns and stuff like that. But like, like I think aesthetically, that's that's a big influence. I think the primary influence for this is, um, uh, in, interview with the vampire. So one of these is like a real height. Really serious. Yeah, one of these is a real height and melodrama. I don't know if I've ever really seen an adaptation like this where it removes like all of the joy and comedy. This is so self serious. But I still really enjoyed looking at it. Oh yeah, for yeah. Whatever reason, yeah, yeah. Because you um, think that that would kill it, but it doesn't. No, it it. Uh, and I also remember it being more. I also I remember at least when I was younger. It feeling dirtier in kind of like that Spawn kind of way, which yeah. which which I, I'm sure I, I'd watch Spawn the animated series now and wouldn't feel as uncomfortable or kind of gross as I did when I was a kid watching, which is part of the appeal. Because you've never seen anything like that before. Yeah, but like this has like snuff films and stuff for parts of it, and I remember a lot of that feeling like really dark. And when I got to it in this, it, it's not that it's not dark; it is, but like it didn't feel like so far. Like but how much of that younger. is just you're desensitized? Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Um, you have to think about all the other things you've watched. I still feel like so. So the first half of this is pretty close to events in the manga, if not tone of how exactly they play out. The second half is all original, and it feels a little rushed. I still think that second half works completely. Um, I still really like the the. I I, I thought because I've I, you know since I've I watched this I have read the manga and like I know what it's supposed to be. Um, but it doesn't matter. Like, it's still quite good, and the, the, they create a villain for the end of the season who does not exist in the manga, and um, he's still great. And in the manga, Alucard never gets, like, an equal. He's always top dog. He gets larger threats to deal with, so um, you never get to, like... Alucard, when, he, when he's fighting people, he, uh, especially early on, he's really bored. And he's really angry because everyone he's fighting is, is an imposter. He's not, they're not a real vampire. Mm -hmm. And he, he says things like, like, let's fight like real vampires. And you never get anyone that fights like Alucard. Um, kind of the priest later, but that's a completely different source. He's not another vampire. Um, you never get someone that's like Alucard as a vampire. Everyone's an imposter. Uh, some of them are more powerful, but they're not, they're still imposters. The series gives you a real vampire from the fight at the end, and I think it totally works. Also, the vampire's name is never revealed, and I love it, because Alucard asks what his name is, and he says, I'm incognito. And Alucard just keeps referring to him as incognito. <laughs> <laughs> like, as just... And he just says, like, like my name's was, kind of a mystery, too. I wish that was my name. That's, that, that's, that's like such a name. great... I love the name. I, like, I love that as a name. Um... Nah, it, it really holds up, and I think much like the first series of Full Metal Alchemist, I don't think people go back to this because they have a more more modern version that is also closer to the source material, and I think uh, people... And they discount the original. Yeah, it still works. Just, um, just because it's not, in, you know, exactly authentic, doesn't or, or just because it's not exactly like what it's based on doesn't make it It's invalid. a good piece on its own. Yeah. Um, it, like, like put put aside what you want it to be based on the source material and things like that. It still works on its own. I still really like well, it. Well, the fact that you have that is is almost more of a justification for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that you have a thing that's that's uh, that's more like the source material. It's almost more of a justification for that to exist because it's like a alternate version. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's just it's a real it's a real good twelve episodes. Um, there's maybe one or two episodes I think you can kind of cut, but 
Uh, I didn't realize it was that short. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's only twelve episodes. I don't have to watch through it. Then. Um, and and they uh, one of the things that one of the thing the big thing that they do that deviates from from the the manga entirely is their take on Sarah's Victoria, which is very much Louis from Interview with the Vampire. She's much more comical in the comics, and she's also she comes around faster to the vampire thing. By the end of this, she's still not fully embraced it. Like, more so, but still not fully. Um, she gets like Alucard in, in, in the manga, where like she goes full bore, like, I'm taking people out. Um, uh, but it still works. Like, it's a different character arc for the same character, and it works 100%. Like, it's just, it's really good. I, I'm kind of bummed that I think People, it's kind of past people by at this point. And if people do watch a series, it is going to be Helsing Ultimate. This is still a legitimately valid uh, version of this material, and just a really good twelve episode anime. Um, and it was also really influential. It is really influential. The entire two thousands is kind of keeping up with Helsing, um, at least as far as like vampire stuff. Like there is a show that is basically a rip off of this, um, uh, mixed with Trigun. Um, but yeah, no, it's. And we get the manga because the anime does so well. Uh, like, it is a huge hit, and then we start bringing bring the, 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 the comics over. But, like, regardless of historical importance, it's still good. It's still quite good, and I think people should watch it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to, if I, like, go back and, and, and finish it. Well, I mean, I'll watch it from the beginning. But I'll sure, I've sure. always loved that theme song so much. Oh, oh, I, I should also mention, one of the best soundtracks for any, any anime ever. It's just... The whole way through, all of, like the entire thing is just—it's great. Um, I love all. It really drives tracks. it, but it's cool to have a thing with the animation that's as good to match. Mm -hmm. So you don't even feel like you, you, you have to. Have, it's not like it's—it's—it's it's, uh, it's a brilliant soundtrack that's behind something that otherwise would not be, you know. Uh, yeah, no, it just cool adds. It, it like, just adds to something that's already already epic. Great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I think this is kind of one of the last great. Uh, anime is in the traditional anime hand drawn style. I'm sure people are gonna come out and be like, "Well, actually, it wasn't hand drawn and it was done digitally." But I'm pretty sure it's still hand drawn. At and this here's point. six more that I yeah. would put with it. But yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. Like, I mean, I can't believe what comes before this and things like that. Like, sure. like, like this is this is one of the last ones. I'm not saying it's the only one or the best one. It's just it's one of the last ones that I go back to that I'm like, "Oh, this still looks amazing." Uh, next thing I want to talk about for just a little bit is uh, Freeform's Cloak and Dagger. I watched the uh, first two episodes, which are the uh, only episodes that are that are uh, available right now as I'm recording this. I don't know when that airs. I don't keep up with when TV is airing things right mm. now. Uh, but I, I saw that it was up on Hulu, and I tend to review at least pilots of new superhero shows, and expected nothing from it. We reviewed the trailer. We thought it looked awful. I uh, it, it I looked, think it looked like, like the worst thing. It looked very generic and bland. I mean, I thought it looked awful. Okay, because, I thought it was very generic. Uh, especially the way they were advertising it, because it looked like it was just going to come out and spell everything thematically, and it was like, here's here's the characters in a scene breaking down how they mirror each other, and it's obnoxious. Well, the scene where we see oh, that, yeah, I uh, that in in that trailer hasn't happened yet, so I don't know what that's going to be like when I get there. Um, I didn't hate it, and I expected to want to turn it off real quick. I, I thought it was going to feel like, for me, because we really didn't like this, I thought it was going to be like Runaways, mm. and it wasn't, and it felt almost like, I mean, it's weird to say old school, but it felt like uh, like, like, a, like a late 90s or early 2000s um, like like teen angst kind of show. This feels like this is exactly the property what we would have used back then too. Yeah, it is. I it's it's very like CW's cloak and dagger, but from like that period and weirdly kind of tickled my Smallville sensibilities a little bit. Uh, I I de-aged watching this show. If you'd been in the room with me, I don't know how it would have reacted to it. Um, if, if uh, And I don't mean to say that because I can't... you'd be like 20 years younger. ...watch a thing with another person... Right. I, it's not like I can't watch a thing with another person and still have my own opinion. I don't mean that. It's just that sometimes Eric and I will start talking things out while we're watching a thing because we can't always help ourselves. Or, or we would have poked fun at it. Yeah. And you wouldn't have had your own personal experience. It clouds your, yeah. your, your bias, right? Right, watching it all by myself in a dark room with with headphones in, I enjoyed it. I don't think it's great. It might not even quite be good, but um, I liked the moodiness of it. I liked you the only, atmosphere you, of you, it. You only have to do Crypto Freaks now. You can just you can just put just, that up. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It might not be good. 
<laughs> um, yeah, and I don't know if I, I'm going to get tired of it quickly if I keep watching it. Um, let me start with uh, a couple more things I liked. So, like I said, um, I, Mood and Atmosphere uh, is, 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 uh, is, is, is pretty good. Um, pay, okay, this is weird. It feels paced pretty well scene to scene, and then I get to the end of an episode, and it doesn't feel like we got anything done, or, or enough done. Uh, so I'm a little bit frustrated that by the end of two episodes, we haven't gotten any more done than we have gotten, and it feels like they are stretching what is probably a story that could that, that you could do in half the episodes they're going to do. To, to does it feel like a, like a two-part TV pilot, season? or does it feel like that's just the pacing of the show? It really feels like it's just the pacing of that show, but I don't have a third episode to compare it to, so I don't know. Um, but I will say, and hopefully this isn't too much of a spoiler, uh, Cloak and Dagger, uh, you know, Ty and Tandy, they meet in the first episode. Well, they actually meet in a flashback at the beginning because they get their powers together, uh, and they're kind of tied to each other um, to some degree, although I don't know how their powers work. I don't know what the rules are yet. I'm hoping they begin to make sense at some point, or I'm or I'm out. Uh, some of, some of this is I know little enough. I can't be annoyed yet about things I want to probably be annoyed about. Um, but uh, they meet in the first episode, and uh, she steals his wallet because she's a thief. Uh, and all the thieving stuff is is pretty well handled. I actually buy that she's able to do the, the things she can do. Oh, and I want to talk about the age thing in a minute, because that's interesting. Um, but they uh, they meet, and then uh, you th I, I figure early on in the second episode, they'll finally get together, and they'll be a duo, and they'll start doing duo things. That hasn't happened yet. By the end of the second episode. Uh, pretty exciting cliffhanger at the end of the second episode, though. Um, maybe a little bit typical TV. A lot of this is typical TV. Uh, but I was, uh, I don't know. It it it, uh, it was it, it was it was kind of neat. Like I said, I was just I was thrown back to like seventeen watching the show. Um, so this show has the opposite problem that Smallville does with age, where they look like teenagers, they act like teenagers, they can go into places and pretend they're adults, and everyone believes them. And that's a huge problem, especially with Tandy, because. Uh, she is a thief, and she will go into places where you should be going, what is this 15 or 16 year old girl doing here? And everybody treats her like she's 23. And that is really problematic. It happens constantly. Um, I like the tragedy of the show. Uh, I buy the, the, how uh, broken and lost both of these characters are. Like I said, it's a real moody thing, and um, it's... I don't usually like teen angst things, but I had that period when I did, and so, like I said, it keeps taking me back to that. And um, they, uh, they're they both, you know, making awful choices uh, because of people they lost the night that they got their powers. And I'm, I'm, I'm buying that, and I'm kind of rooting for them, and um, I'm hoping that it becomes a superhero show at some point. Uh, because right now, it's just a lost souls screwing up, you know, messing up their lives kind of thing. Uh, so You're you, hoping the arena you have, shows up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have Ty, who uh, is who really wants to find and murder or kill the the the, the murderer of his brother, who uh, the police claim doesn't even exist. So it's uh, it's a situation where um, in in the in the flashback at the beginning of the first episode, and we flashback a lot. It does have the flashback the, the over, overuse of flashback thing and tied to powers which I really freaking hate um, because I don't and also because I don't know how it works but uh, Ty um, as a kid helped uh, tried to help his brother by stealing something that his brother was after and it gets his brother in trouble and he ends up getting the both of them but, but especially his brother and he and, and his older brother ends up uh, getting shot by a cop who later on the police claim it doesn't even exist and it's it's a weird conspiracy thing and I'm not sure why they're claiming he doesn't exist I don't know why they're not just denying no he didn't actually shoot your brother and I thought they were gonna play it up uh, as social commentary about um, police shootings and it seems like it more of just an isolated 
like conspiracy thing. It doesn't seem like it, they're really dealing with that, but maybe it will become more about that as it goes along. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I expected that to be really heavy-handed. I'm not saying that that's not a thing that we that we shouldn't uh, tackle on television. I just didn't think maybe this was the place because I don't think that the the writing is up to spec to like like uh, deal with real social to, issues. Yeah, yeah, and to deal with it maturely. Maybe it is. I don't know the, 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 because it seems like maybe okay. They're either avoiding it or. It might go there, and I might like it. I'm not sure. Mm. It is really inconsistent in the maturity department. There are scenes that are so cringeworthy as far as, like, trite dialogue and people not talking like people and people talking like uh, somebody is writing philosophy into their voices. But they're few and far between. When they go there, it's the worst. It's Arrow Season 3 bad. And then the rest of the time, it's decent. Okay, writing. Don't usually have a problem with it. But then you'll have an entire scene that's awful. Not a couple lines. The whole scene. And it's usually when Ty is talking to his mom. When his mom shows up, I'm like, oh no, we're going to start going into rhetorical nonsense territory. And that's what we keep doing with her. Um, I cannot help but crack up every time, almost every time, a... Uh, a, a licensed or popular song plays in the show because it does the Smallville thing where most of it is scored that way and we, mm. we still do that a lot, right? It does the thing that Vince hates and likes to make fun of every chance he gets where they will play things that are not just thematically relevant but they sound like they're explaining what's going on in the scene. And in the flashback at the beginning where... And, and also, there's some there's some major easy convenience of people being in the right place in the right time in the show. It's a, it's a big problem. Um, but I uh, when and and, it's, and and honestly, with the origin with Ty and Tandy uh, ending up, they, they both end up uh, winding up in the river, like 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 either like either crashing or however they wind up in the river. And uh, there's a rocks on oil explosion, and that's how they end up getting their powers. Um, Is it MCU? It is MCU, okay. and it seems to be the explosion they talk about in Iron Man Three. I'm pretty sure it's that explosion. Oh, not sure. Interesting. Pretty sure the timeline would match up. Interesting. Because uh, if, if memory serves, uh, I, the the president in in that movie covered up something to do with an explosion with with Roxxon. He didn't Am cover I up right about that? The Roxxon just didn't. No one. There were it, no consequences. That's what it was. It wasn't covered yeah. up. It was yeah. just. He, he, but it was an explosion, right? Or a spill. It was a spill. Yeah. If this is an explosion that causes an oil spill. Okay. And I, uh, if that happened, let's say Iron Man three that happens a year or two before that, or mm-hmm. let's even say it happens the same year. But let's say it's it's like the same year or, or a year before that. But I think they say last year in that. In okay. Iron 3. That would make it twenty eleven. Mm-hmm. This is twenty eighteen. Those kids would no, have it been twenty twelve. Iron Man three is twenty thirteen. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay. Twenty twelve. That's six years. Those kids would have been eight or nine. The, the years track. Okay, because they're teenagers in this show. That's um, cool. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's the only thing nobody's mentioned anything about superheroes, and they seem they're reacting to their powers like nobody has ever gotten powers before. So that's a thing. Mm. Um, but I, I I'll give them that. I mean, it seems like TV can't stop going to rocks on. We go to rocks on everywhere with the TV shows. Mm. But whatever. Um, I guess I like that. But anyway, um, it is kind of convenient. I uh, that. It's it's not too convenient that they're that, that they're both in the water at the same time necessarily. I mean, I, like I think like that can happen, and these aren't people that knew each other before. It's that they they saw each other earlier in the night in a different place in the city. Why did we have to do that? Why did that have to be anywhere near each other before that? That's that's stupid. Mm-hmm. But anyway, when uh, when Tandy's uh, dad is um, crashes their car in the water, and it's a real standard like. Uh, he's not paying attention to the road, and he, uh, he he ends up getting hit by a semi truck, and it happens because uh, he is he works for Roxxon, and he's he's uh, he knows the explosion is going to happen. He's trying to get them to, to to do a thing that will that will stop it. They're not listening to him, and it explodes, right? Mm. And um, while he's on the phone, they get hit by a semi truck, and then they, they go they go into the water, and there's this song that's like literally, "I'm in the water." <laughs> Jumped away from an explosion. <laughs> Wonder if I'll get superpowers. And I just lost it. And there's another one of those later. It's great. Uh, lastly, I'll talk a little bit about the performances. Um, I am so on the fence about both of these kids. 
Tandy has grown on me a lot by the second episode. I'm glad I watched two, because I would be more scathing with her if I hadn't watched the second episode. I think they're going to come into their own. I think as I move along, I'm going to like them more. Right now, especially at the very beginning, I don't think that they're really holding their own uh, great. I don't think that, 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 they, that they really um, like hold their own show. Um you know, wonderfully well. They feel very inexperienced. Um, I think the the kid playing Ty is doing some stuff in some subtle stuff in his performance that's too subtle and just and just not coming out. When when uh, when he's really reserved and you know holding everything back and really uh, uh, I I you know you know brooding, it just comes off blank faced to me, and uh, it's it's not it's not quite working. But I think he's a little bit better in the second episode, too. Um, anytime she does thieving things, I'm buying it, though. So that like that's really interesting. We'll see what they're like together. What's annoying is you'd think that you'd build a show like this on the dynamic of these two people, but I don't have a dynamic yet. Interesting. So Because they're not together yet. So I don't have a real good sense of what the... Uh, overall flavor of the show is going to be at least with them together. I mean, I get it's a really moody show. I get that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what the dynamic is going to be like. And I guess I should... I said lastly, I guess I should also mention um, the power thing. I don't like that their powers are tied to flashbacks. Um, they, they will they will accidentally use their powers and they, or it's somehow related to their powers. They won't even use them necessarily. It'll just be... Because they have powers, they also sometimes flashback to things that happen to them so that I can get a flashback. Just do a flashback. I don't. I don't understand why you have to be so. Is it when they use it. their powers, um, or does the flashback make them use their powers? Okay. No, no. It's it's definitely the first thing, because um, they will they will experience it like it's supernatural. They'll come out of it and be in, and they'll be with another person. Like, did you see that? Like, they're not they're not just flashing back. They're not they're not just remembering. They're actually. Physically flashing back, or not physically, but like there is a, there is a thing with their powers that's making that happen. And sometimes it's not actually a flashback. Sometimes it's in one case it's a weird flash forward, um, where Tandy has this boyfriend who's like the nicest guy in the world, and she's a horrible person the way she treats him. Oh my God, he's great. How dare her? Anyway, see, it's a soap opera, and I'm turning into a into a raving fangirl. Um, but he, uh, it's, it's, it's happening, and it will probably be the thing that makes me keep watching this show. Um, That's how they get you. For a minute. For, like, one more episode, at least. Um, he, just one more. One more. Just, going, just, yeah, one more. just one more. I know, I know what'll happen. You will look at the show and be like, you're watching this? <laughs> you're watching this show? How are the special effects? So far, they're fine. We don't, we haven't gotten a lot yet. I mean, um, yeah, I guess we have, like, a, like, an explosion and stuff. Yeah, it looks good. Um, they're reserved with it. It's, it's real minimal. Uh, but, like, you know, she's she's had her, her her daggers, who, by the way, spoiler alert, she kills someone with on oh. accident. It's great. Um, but she, um, but like, you know, she's got her light daggers, and she's used them a couple of times. And uh, with cloak, there's no special effect there. That that as that as Deadpool in Deadpool Two would say, is not a very cinematic power. Uh, he can use any anything that he can cover himself with to transport. I don't know if that's how it is in the comics, or if it has to be. A that particular cloak. cloak. I don't think it is that. I, I think I think know. it is more like like this. It does feel like they did their homework with the show. Okay. With what little I know about Cloak and Dagger, but I don't understand why they're tied to flashbacks. And that flash forward thing is weird. What I was what I was gonna say is, um, she's with this guy who is really into her and uh, like 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 having um, you know illusions of them eventually getting married and stuff. And she flash forwards to, I. Uh, him having a, a discussion with her that they've never had that sounds almost like a marriage proposal. And that's weird. I don't know what's going on in that scene. Um, but we're completely... So if, I don't want to say inconsistent. I just don't know how it works yet. Maybe it is inconsistent. I don't know. Um, they didn't know that they had these powers until they met, but they don't seem to have to be in close proximity to use them. So I'm confused about that. Is it possible that them coming together just, like, triggered? It, that is possible. Um, and I'm not totally sure what it is that is triggering it when it when they're happening. It feels really convenient where there are just places where the writing wants it to happen, or the writing wants it to be difficult for them so it doesn't happen. But I have to watch more. So, I mean, like, some of... Um, if I'm recommending this at all to anyone that this sounds interesting to, or people that like, like, teen angst drama kinds of shows, um, 
I'm more positive on it right now because I'm holding out hope that things that I haven't been gotten answers to end up making sense. It isn't that they don't make sense yet. It isn't that they don't You're make sense. You're worried that they're not going it's to. It's that I just don't have enough information yet. Mm. Um, I want to trust it. The writing is good enough. I feel like maybe I can. I, I, like This is a way more positive review than I expected to have of the show. I figured in 10 minutes I would want to turn it off. Um, it is uh, It is way better, of, of, of course, than in, than in Humans. Um, and uh, it's somewhere it's, it's somewhere in between Runaways and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. probably. Um, or maybe it's more... I mean, I'm not bored like I was with a lot of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I feel like I might get bored. Because mm -hmm. they're not getting enough done in an episode. Anyway, mm -hmm. talk about that longer than I meant to. Um, let's talk just a tiny bit about Toys That Made Us. You watched the whole second season, no, or part not. of the, the second season. I watched... I only watched the Star Trek episode. I haven't seen any more I watched yet. Star Trek and Transformers. Is that all you watched? That's all I watched. Okay. Well, the other ones are Hello Kitty and something else, which I'm sure I actually will end up watching, because I am kind of interested to know where Hello well, Kitty Well, I watched the from. Barbie one. I thought it was really interesting. The Barbie so one was, was really interesting. Did you watch that? I liked yeah. it a lot. Yeah, I watched the whole first season. Okay. Um, I didn't know that. You didn't watch yeah. it with me. I watched it on No, no, no. no I, I, I watched it after. Um, but, uh... No, I'm interested in the Hello Kitty one just because it's it's it, it, it's just like an icon thing. Like it's not something tied to a TV show or a you know anything else. We've talked about uh, like like what kind of a show this is before and what we like about the format and what we don't like about the format. So let's just talk in case you guys are curious about these particular episodes, just real briefly about what they do specifically with Transformers and Star Trek. With Transformers, um, just give me like a, a, a thing you're really happy with with that and what sucked about it. Um, the, the, the thing that I really liked is that we go to the Japanese people and we have um, interviews with the original toy makers. Um, oh, cool. So that's really nice. Yeah. I really appreciated that. Uh, they go into... It needed to be longer. They spend a lot of time getting to the Transformers, breaking down the levels that get us to the the toys that then America buys because they're from separate lines and becomes the Transformers. And then... They're like, oh no, we've done half our show. Uh, and they just kind of... They run through G1 real, real quick... And then just say, and Transformers has been super popular ever since. Oh, and Beast Wars happened. And with the with the previous season, I was really impressed with how they were able to cover so much of Star Wars' toy history. And so much say, of they just sort of do that with Star Wars too, right? We covered uh, we cover Phantom Menace quite a bit and Attack of the Clones quite a bit. Well, that's true, but there's been another ten years since then. That's true, but. I don't know. It felt it felt like like we but really those things are not as notable. I mean, like with with Transform if you're a Transformers fan, Beast Wars and that stuff is is notable. And Beast Wars is big because there was such a fan backlash against it before it came out, and then people were won over. And yeah, and we don't really go into most of that. We don't even mention the Unicorn trilogy or the fact that Japan made uh, toys and series of Transformers past us because they make three more oh. shows after we stopped making Transformers in the eighties. We don't even mention that. There's a lot of stuff like that where I'm like, I kind of wish you talked about some of this. Well, I know you. You don't like... Partly because you probably feel like your time is wasted. And don't even put your words in, in your mouth if I'm wrong about this. I don't think you like watching a, 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 a documentary like this where you know too much they don't tell you. Yes. Yes. Um, it just... It felt like Transformers maybe warranted two parts. Um, sure. Given how much... And I really appreciate how much time they spend on the development of getting to the Transformers. I really appreciate that we didn't just start with, and Japan had these toys and we bought them, go. I like that we break down all of this. Yeah, I, I would say that these have been best for Origins. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted more after G1. Um, and I will watch that one, I just didn't get around to it. But, uh, yeah. but it's it's good, it's just, it's, it's a little skimpy on everything after G1. It's, it's like the Ninja Turtles documentary. Yeah. And I wish they would do one on Ninja Turtles to maybe get to more of that stuff. But yeah, but then I'll make me more angry at that, that documentary. No, me too. <laughs> but if they did that, they would probably uh, mostly just give us a lot of what we had already. Yeah. Yeah. And let's face it, the interesting stuff is more the initial development of that toy line, I, I, I think. Yeah, but yeah. I uh, so we both watched the Star Trek one, and um, I learned some stuff that I didn't know. Um, I did. I the, I guess the stuff I liked most about what they. What, what they gave us there uh, was all of the uh, weird kind of 
kind of false starts and Star Trek not finding its footing and, and, and uh, toy companies not knowing what to do with it, not understanding it, and just uh, like 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 plastering. And I and I and I knew this, but it was fun to see a, a lot of it and uh, get the ins and outs of um, the companies where this happened with, especially the first one where the um, Astro Helmet. That was the best. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't know any of that. We're, Obviously, we're not a Star Trek fan. You know, I'm not a Star Trek fan exactly. Where you'll you're getting there. But yeah. Wait, but but, but where where uh, you you had products that already existed that they just threw um, you know Star Trek labels on, and uh, it's the same problem we've had with so many merchandise lines, and frankly, with actual Star Trek sometimes where people get a hold of this of the, of this thing and they just don't understand it at all. Mm. Uh, and I liked uh, all the background on Mego. Yes, I like that they went so far into that, and that they got. The, I mean, I'm glad he's still alive. That guy was great. Um, the, the 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 original Migo president, and um, and I liked uh, I liked the whole thing about uh, him passing up Star Wars and uh, not wanting to take responsibility for that, and um, and and they're you know eventually getting rid of the license, and then um, what they did with um, the. Uh, like anything in the name of it, um, Playmates line uh, was okay. Uh, they didn't spend enough time on it. I agree. It was a huge line. It went for a really long time. They gave us the real bare bones of it, I thought. Uh, they, they did a good job explaining why the... Because, I mean, Playmates made a bazillion Star Trek toys and uh, action figures, and they were really popular, and um, they, they made... It felt like practically every character and really minor characters, and we've shown some of those on, on camera and talked about it, and you, you had Tosk and Hunter of Tosk. I mean, it's really funny, everybody that they made. Um, there's a Darmok figure. I don't know if you know that. Well, that makes um, sense. That's a pretty big episode. Have you seen... Uh, yeah, but at the time... Yeah. It was just an episode. Yeah. Uh, have... Have have you have you seen uh, First Contact yet? That episode. I'm not sure. Um, where I think I think you told me you did. Where where uh, Riker um, goes to that planet and uh, he's pretending to be them or one of them, and then there's the, there's a oh there's yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. It. And it's basically the '90s on this planet. And there's the guy with glasses. Yeah. The only aliens in Star Trek you ever see with glasses. Yeah. They made a figure of of of, uh, of Riker as a Malkorian. Just right here in that episode, as what it's hilarious. Anyway, um, but they talk about uh, how they had uh, a line. They 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 did they did uh, several lines actually of um, really uh, short numbered figures where they didn't uh, put out enough and. Um, there was too much demand for them, and they wouldn't. And they were gimmicky, and they only made seven to seventeen hundred and one because seventeen oh one, and uh, that ended up killing the whole line. Um, but they didn't get into a whole lot after that. Although, I am glad that uh, there was any discussion at all about um, about Art Asylum. Yeah, because uh, that's where I learned that uh, Art Asylum became Diamond Select. I didn't know that. I didn't either. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and McFarlane is interviewed briefly. I wish he was there a little bit Which more. Which is crazy. But he just got the license, and yeah. I didn't know McFarlane got the license. That's really cool. I'm yeah. glad. That, I'm glad they've got it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the the thing that the, the thing that sucked about it was uh, that they wouldn't stop comparing it to Star Wars. Yes. And I got really really it was sick really of that. Really annoying. They're doing it in the '60s before Star Wars exists. Would you Would you agree? It was a little disrespectful in a way. Like, it am is. I prudish by saying no, that? No, no, I, I don't think so. I was annoyed by it, um, where they just had to keep talking about. And they well, lead with this it. other thing, and it's so it was so much pop, more popular. And yeah, I'm, yeah, I know that. That's they the lead point. with like, it, like 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 the opening of that episode is like is like is like they they say these things, and they're like, but we're not talking about Star Wars. Uh, like I feel like they lost time over it. That's part of what was annoying uh, annoying to me about it is they thought it was a, a funny joke and they were they were they, they were almost trolling about it. Where like five minutes in, he goes, "Oh, it, like they keep showing Star Wars going da da da," and then he goes, "Oh, we will keep doing this." And I'm like, "No, stop it. You saw yeah, that's, that's yeah. really irritating." Yeah, no, no, no. They wasted time on that. Now maybe 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 the, the episode came in short. And they're like, let's throw in a bunch of Star Wars jokes. I don't know, but uh, it shouldn't have because there's things they skipped. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh. That felt, I don't know. It felt wrong. I I didn't care for that. Um, and, and I wish they'd gone more into the into the into the really large toy line because basically all they say is, and they made basically everyone, and then they made these limited toys, and that killed it. Yeah. Uh, they didn't talk at all about what the reaction to those toys were, like like what the fan reaction was, how well they they sold, because it's basically just they made them, and then and then and then people stopped. And who it. they sold to, because they made it sound like it was an adult collector market the entire time, and kids were buying those toys. Mm -hmm. Or at least that was the sense I got. Was mm -hmm. that, was that they, they were they were treating it almost like 
because uh, because they say like you know the reason it finally worked this time is because they they were they were they were authentic to the show and they were I mean they looked great mm. um, especially for that scale that mm. three point five scale and um, or no is it's it's a little bit bigger than that or is it three five anyway it's it's uh because there was that company that tried to do the Star Wars scale. And I have seen those. It was cool they talked about that whole thing. Mm. But then, um, but but uh, but they were like they were like uh, you know you know finally they were uh, selling to Star Trek fans, and that's true. But kids bought those toys. Mm. Yeah, I, I I really liked the thing with the movies. Where, like they just kept missing the right ones to merchandise. Yes, I really liked that. Um, and and the, and then Star Trek toys, I. Like this is me not being a Star Trek fan. Like, like that might be one of those things. Like everyone talks about all the time. Like, oh yeah, the helmet with the with the worry on it. Yeah. But I didn't know any of that, and I thought it was funny. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, okay. What else? Do oh, we and the want tiny to... tricorder and the tiny uh, phaser. I thought that was hilarious. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um. So speaking of Star Trek, I uh, we've been getting a lot of questions about this again. Eric and I are still trying to figure out what to do with the S Babylon Fifty Nine. Um, I know that has been our update the last few shows. We just keep and saying we're not sure what to do about it. In our defense, we just have not had time to. to we have watch watched some of the S Nine. We have. And I have. I have. I. I think since no, we have this is four episodes show. since last week. I even that. wrote that down and thought maybe we would talk about it today. We're already forty five minutes into yeah. crisis, and we have other other things to to talk about today. I don't think. It's realistic to get just because I don't want to pay a lip service. I don't want to do yeah, five minutes yeah. on it, and that's why I don't, I, I don't want to do it right well, now. Well, and, and, and um, we watched four episodes. And like I, I can't even tell you how long ago we watched Duet. Yeah, I know. Um, it's like we we cannot figure out what we're going to do about it. We yeah. are still kicking it around. We're going to talk about it. Originally, before the omnibus, uh, before we started the omnibus, and it exploded into what it is now. Um, our, our original plan was to was to uh, watch those before we did this show mm. on on Sunday nights. Mm. This takes too long. We just can't do it. Yeah. So we're gonna try to figure it out. That was our plan. I that was our plan. That. that was your idea. Yeah. And uh, I was I was still trying to figure out how to get the show short enough that we could get away with it. It's not. I don't think it's gonna happen. It's I not. Just, I that, just don't that, see that that plan is that plan is not possible. So. Um, and, and and a lot of the reason that we haven't prioritized it over some other things is because the uh, the interest in it isn't isn't great enough to prioritize it, but we still really want to do it. And we, mm. and, we, and we have a few people that like really really want it. Mm. But those videos only ever did like two or three hundred views. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to make everything about view count, but um, it's hard to prioritize that over other things. Other things, or, yeah. or, 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 or over the quest, because uh, because even if the request we aren't even even if we do a request and like that video doesn't get viewed a lot. Some of these twenty dollars. Some, why, some, why, yeah. When somebody like monetarily, that you know, no, of course. Account, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, people are helping us out. We're yeah, gonna, we're going to do those reviews. Yeah, absolutely. So, we haven't come up with a solution, mm. but I don't want folks to count it out yet because we really want to watch through those. Mm. I just don't know if talking about DS Nine and Babylon Five together is viable at this point. I think much more realistic would be for Eric for us to. Um, treat those like Netflix shows and binge a season and talk about a season. Yeah. I think that's really the only recourse at this point. Yeah. We'll keep talking about it. Yeah. But that's yeah, what I'm kicking around right you now. Might be right. And I don't mean do a season every omnibus. I just mean like maybe every couple. We just mm. we, we try to get one knocked out. Mm. That may be the way to go. And watch them on our own time yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, an episode of what is that horror show? That the Washingtonians is in. Oh, Masters of Horror. Masters of Horror. Now, we watched this for last Full time. transparency. Events. It's been like a month ago, so we're going to remember this as well as humanly possible. This was suggested to us... Let me let me find it. Let me the find day it. Let me after find it. we recorded the Omnibus, I messaged him. I was like, we forgot to talk about the Washingtonians. Dylan D'Antonio. Uh, Dylan, I'm so sorry we forgot to talk about that last time. Uh, it just didn't make it into my list. We watched it. Uh, we didn't watch it again for the show. We watched it like a month ago. So we're going to do our level best with it. Uh, mm -hmm. But he asked for an episode of Masters of Horror. And Eric has actually reviewed an episode of Masters of Horror. Before. I have. Uh, the I had one never, of the John Carpenter one. I had never seen that show. It's an anthology show. It's uh, they 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 bring in like uh, guest directors and writers, and probably writers too. I'm assuming. Uh, not a, a lot of stunt writers. Okay. Uh, do they have a staff? It's it's very much about the the directors. Okay. And uh, this one is uh, another. This is like the second or third of these we've had to do re requested. Uh, it's about another cannibal cult. And this time it's the Washingtonians, and they're a cult of, uh, of of uh, people. Are they like they're not direct descendants of Washington, are they? Or no, are they just, they're no. just people who uh, are 
aware that Washington was a cannibal. In this universe, George Washington was a cannibal. And, and wanted the a, entire country to be cannibals. Yeah, and that, that was his like secret plan, and it was this big conspiracy thing. And I, I don't understand what exactly he was trying to do with that, by the way, because... I don't know why it was such a secret if he wanted everyone to be cannibals. Mm -hmm. I kept kind of wondering about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what what foiled his I'm his plan? Sure. Like, they don't really tell you how his actual life differed from the what we what we know in the history books. Yeah, okay. So but anyway, so, so, I'm getting ahead of myself. So putting it at the top. Yes. This is not great. Uh the acting is pretty bad. Yeah. The 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 final scene with the Washingtonians is fun. Um I love the concept of this. I, we finish this, I'm like, somebody needs to remake that. I love the concept of using a horror metaphor for how little we actually know about history and how much history is misreported yeah. and alters our perception and, uh, and, and, and how much of a myth history really is. How much of a legend history actually, what we know about history really is. I love that idea. I, I love the it. idea of the history written by the winners. Uh, personified by horror. The problem is, it takes too long to get to that idea, and then we do nothing with it. Can we take a real quick break? Yeah? Can you do something about that spider? We're having our own little masters of horror. Yeah, we sure are. Do you see it? Yep. Oh, thanks, man. My big thing with this is, it seems like it's one of those B-horror things that's supposed to be fun because it's so wild and outlandish and out there, and uh, it has kind of an underlying message, but that almost doesn't matter because it's, it's kind of just about the uh, silly, ridiculous concept. I want to ask you this question. Um, is it going too far? Because I really felt this way watching it. Is it going too far saying that this was not the material to do that with? Um, like, this, this concept, I think, is maybe okay if you... And you could even be a little bit tongue-in-cheek about it. I just don't think the approach was right. I don't think the like like totally out there be horror thing was really the way to go with this. It felt kind of mean spirited with the material. It felt almost um, like uh, disrespectful to, to history to me. Um, okay, I do not have that. You didn't have that. No. Okay. All right. I think it's hilarious. That's, me, that's maybe just me then. And I like the idea of doing something this ridiculous and heightened to actually kind well, of say something. I just felt that way because they didn't give us enough about what Washington actually was. Mm -hmm. in their version. It, it almost felt disrespectful just because they didn't make it like alternate enough. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense at all. Mm -hmm. no, I guess that's fair. I, I mean, it's supposed to be our world. It's like the secret history behind our world. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I have no okay, problem. Okay, so you didn't I, have that. No, 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 no. My issue is that it's boring. Yeah, no, it is uh, kind of boring. I love the over-the-topness of it. We don't get to it fast enough. Uh, we don't get to it till near the end, and that stuff is fun. I enjoyed watching this in the way that I enjoy watching something bad, where we were making fun of it. We were kind of having, uh, you know, you know sure, there's, there's yeah. a really bad acting. And, there's a really bad acting. Uh, 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 I feel like so. Uh, the well, I'm just trying to describe the way I felt about it. Sure. I don't, I don't know if I'm right that it was actually like I don't want to be prudish about it when when, when I when I say it. But it just it felt mean spirited, and I can't totally put my finger on. Okay. That's that's all. I didn't have that, but this is more in kind of my wheelhouse. Yeah. So like, so like, like I, I, know I, I was thinking about it like that. Um, it felt like until we get well, that's not even true. The entire way through, it felt like a Goosebumps episode. No, it did. Uh, and we get to the end, and we go gorier than we do with Goosebumps, but the performances are no less subtle than they would be in Goosebumps. And it's like Goosebumps... We're no more subtle than they would be in Goosebumps. ...in that the story understands precisely nothing about how the world works at all. Uh, the whole thing about the... Uh, about the note that Washington wrote with his own hand that was in the painting. That's exactly how a Goosebumps thing would, would handle that. Yeah, that's exactly. It was really convenient that he even found it. He rips into precisely the place where it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the way it was, like, you know, authenticated or not authenticated, all of that, like, it understands nothing about how the world works. And, well, what's really weird is that, like, they almost immediately believe it. And I like the idea... Yeah. I like the idea... Th theoretically, of like kind of it gnawing at the main guy and and his wife being like, just because it's Washington's birthday. Well, we were in that town, so it must be authentic. Which, like, by the way, I, I don't know if you know this, but Washington was born right around there. I'm like, 
Uh, I was like, it's a, that must be a tourist town. There must be signs upon Everywhere. signs as you yeah. drive, letting you know this is the birthplace, birth, birthplace of Washington. Once but, again, that also feels like a thing that would be on a, a kid's horror show, you know? Like, that's I, Eerie yeah. Indiana or whatever. Like, I, I like the idea of it kind of like gnawing at them, like, what if that was written by Washington? The problem is, they immediately start taking it seriously. It's like, you think this is written by Washington? Yeah. You don't really think this is written by Washington, right? It, it can't possibly have been written by Washington. And I also like that it's just like, it's just like a memo like to self, like, dear self, remember that you love eating children the most? <laughs> yeah. George Washington. <laughs> Why did you sign that? <laughs> why? Why did he sign it? Have you ever signed a sticky note? Yeah. Well, I'm leaving, well, I'm leaving notes for other people. You ever signed a sticky note for you? No. I need eggs, bacon, and milk. Sign and I, Captain Logan. No, I, I've never done that. <laughs> no. Um, this doesn't work. Um, yeah. I enjoyed watching it. I would not watch this again by myself. I would watch this with other people. Uh, Just to gauge the reaction of how insane it is. I like watching bad things in a group. I think that's fun. Sure, yeah. Um, this is the kind of thing I would watch in a group setting. Um, it's it's not great. Um, I like things about it, but it, this is this is my least favorite of the three episodes of Master Horror I've seen. This is my least favorite. I think it would have been more novel and uh, weird if we hadn't seen that other cannibal thing that Neil had us watch. Yeah, uh, Society. Society, which is great. Thanks. No, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, but but anyway, so yeah, this was a strange piece. I would like to. I think there's season sets. I might at some point just pick this up and watch through these. I'm curious. I mean, because there's enough that I'm curious about that I might buy just a whole season. Because there's another Carpenter one season two. Stuart Gordon, who did Reanimator, does two. Uh, does an episode in season one, season two. Um, I think there's a major Japanese horror film actor that makes one. There's enough there. I think there's 12 episodes. Season. There's enough that I'd try it. I watched the Jennifer. I watched Jennifer. It was weird. Which was made by the guy that did uh, that one movie we watched. Yeah, I think... I Not so spirit. The, 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 the one with the monkey with the, with the, oh, with the knife. Yeah. That one. Yeah. The phenomenon. The title that... Yeah, Phenomenon. That was really generic and didn't fit the right. material. Uh, yeah, that you spent like... Half an hour just giving a synopsis of that might be my favorite thing I've ever done. You the could not, ha yeah. I just <laughs> sat back and watched. I was like, I don't know. You know, I haven't looked at. I haven't looked at the comments to see if anyone enjoyed me just reciting that movie. I was like, yeah. I was like, Eric, and you realize twelve people are watching this right now, right? And he's like, I don't. Care. I was having fun. Um, yeah, I'm, I am having a hard time articulating my feelings about this. I think I was disappointed that it wasn't more thought out. Is the main thing. I wish it was just weird. I like it, like I wish it was bigger and weirder earlier. Like yeah, I love that like Washington's fake teeth are because those are the teeth he he eats no, with. No, that's hilarious. Like that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, more of that. that that's the thing. I don't even think I would have I I, I would have minded because I said is it is it wrong to do it with this material? I don't think that's really what I mean. Yeah. It, it's just like the fact that it wasn't more outlandish all the way through, and it is crazy and outlandish. Like it like it is. Mm. What am I trying to say? I, like, I, I'm not sure. It, it's it's just. Uh, it's is it just that, that you're you're one like you're really wondering what's I, going on? Then when you find out what yeah. it is, you're like, oh, that's that's crazy. I just want to know why. <laughs> I just want to know his motivation. Like, how did he get like that? And 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 the society. How does I'm this kind of George about that. right? This is like, like how does this George Washington? How's he covered up? Fit with hyster with historical George. How did that guy do all the things that George Washington did? See, I just don't understand that. Yeah, the and, issue and, and, and is, I, and, I like, and I like the idea of like you said, uh, paving over history, and uh, you know, history is, um, is is written by the victors and all of that. Sure, fine, but some too much of the stuff that we're told happened with Washington had to have happened. And it doesn't fit with this guy. Yeah. I, I mean, the biggest problem is, is is that he becomes president. Like, if he'd just been the guy that really that was, like, instrumental in winning the, the Revolutionary War, like, you could kind of get away with it. Like, and then he died in battle, and, like, like, like but nobody knows who he really was. We also could have maybe, maybe this is too on the nose, but with, with this show, <laughs> why not? Uh, it also could have been... And maybe there was actually a little bit of an attempt at this now that I'm thinking about it. I think we could have brought to the fore uh, this as a metaphor for what, um, for, for, uh, for the negative side of America. That, like, like, uh, like uh, America as the parasite, America mm -hmm. as the cannibal. Mm -hmm. um, like, we, we came in and took the country from someone else 
and uh, like like a, and and then you know it, it could be a, um, a a criticism of like like. Uh, the capitalistic society that we have, mm -hmm. whether whether you agree with that or not, but that that's like that's like a way maybe it could have gone, where it's like I uh, you know we we uh we we kind of we kind of you know you know take from other people to get what we have, and then that props people up, and then they you know um, pretend like there's an American dream, there is it really American dream or whatever? Like like you could use this as a metaphor for that. Yeah, yeah. Um... I, I just I really want this remade as like a short story or like a full movie where like somebody like really works on it. Like I love the yeah, idea. Yeah, really I also yeah, I also sure. do love and, and maybe you need the like 40... It would work better if more of the founding fathers were cannibals. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Yeah, if that's, that's, George that's a lot of it, isn't yeah. it? Well, and you know what? I think the reason I, I'm so fixated on this, because I'm thinking about my earlier statement and I don't even think I agree with myself. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated that we're picking on George Washington. Why Washington? Why why just him? Because he's the founder of the country. Yeah. Um but, like make it a group. Make it a cabal. Like Um I love and maybe maybe maybe, maybe this this works better because it, it takes so long before you get any kind of answers. I love when we get to the point where he gets his 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 historian friend. And he's like he's he's like they're covering it all up and he's like and he's like who? He's like historians. <laughs> like as if everyone that goes to to yeah, uh, college to become a historian learns how awful history is and then is hushed and you're not allowed to tell yes. anyone and there's mm -hmm. a secret group of historians that are trying to get the real history the truth about the history out i love that it's so ridiculous no, that's that's great and the idea that like you're you're like how does that even work like, what you're like put in a back room and you're like if you want to know about history here it is yeah you can't tell anyone or we will kill your whole family i want this remade i really do yeah sure because I didn't um, like it, but I think I could. Dylan, that was a weird pick, man. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, but interesting. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot, everybody, for watching Primetime Crisis. We sure appreciate it. We are going to move on now. We're going to mosey right along. And uh, Eric is going to talk a little bit of about uh, James Bond, as uh, he almost always does on the omnibus, at least right now. So uh, we're going to go on to License to Review. And uh, if you're just watching this video, thanks a bunch for tuning in. And if you uh, want to watch the next segment, just let the playlist roll along. And after a commercial break, you will get to the next review. Thanks for watching. I'm Captain Logan. I'm Eric.